Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to talk about the two last angular component lifecycle hooks that we haven't covered so far. It's the after content checked and after view checked lifecycle hooks. Let's start with the first of the two after content checked. This lifecycle hook can be implemented by implementing the after content checked interface. We can implement this interface by implementing the ng after content checked method. Let's quickly add here some logging so that we see when this method is getting called by Angular. If we now reload the application, we're going to have a look here at the console to see what is going on. So we can see that the constructor is getting called of this component, ng on changes and ng on init just like before. And now we have here a call to ng after content checked. So the question here is why is this method getting called? When is ng after content checked called by the Angular framework? This lifecycle hook is going to get called by Angular whenever Angular finishes checking the content part of this component. So this component here is the course card component. So if we switch over here to our application component template where the course card is getting used, if you remember this part here that exists between the course card open tag and the course card close tag, this is the content part of the component. In this case, this component here course image is getting projected inside our course card. So whenever Angular is doing change detection here at the level of this component, one of the things that it's going to do is to check here the content part for changes. In this particular case, Angular is checking here if the value of the icon URL of the course has changed since the last time that change detection was executed. After performing this content check here at the level of the content part of the component, Angular is then going to call this lifecycle hook method ng after content checked. So this method is going to get called with every event that Angular is handling. Let's say for example that we clear here our log and we click here on the save course button, we're going to see that ng after content checked is getting called here multiple times. It's getting called here whenever we click on the course button, whenever we receive some data from the backend, etc. It's getting called every time that Angular triggers change detection. If we click here on edit course, we're going to see that we are going to call ng on changes like we have seen before. And we are also going to check here the content part of this component for changes. So after doing that, we are going to call again ng after content checked. So as we can see, this method is getting called a lot of times. This means that we need to be very careful with the logic that we implement in this method. If we start doing things here such as for example backend calls or other expensive calculations, that could affect a lot the performance of the application. This means that the code that we can implement here needs to be very lightweight. If we implement here some expensive calculation, this is going to slow down a lot our user interface. One of the natural things that we could try to do in this method is to change the data that is getting displayed by the component. So if, for example, we would like to modify the title of the course after each change detection cycle, this lifecycle hook would be a good place to implement that logic. Let's try this out. Let's say that after the content gets checked, we are going to access here our course component. We're going to access the description property and we're going to assign it here the ng after content checked value. Let's try this out. If we reload the application, we're going to see that indeed we have here the string ng after content checked and we don't have here any error in the log. If we switch here to our course card component, we are going to find here other examples of things that can be modified last second using this lifecycle hook. Let's say that for example we would like to change the category of the course, we would like to set it to advanced, we can then do that here in this lifecycle hook. So let's modify the category property, we are going to access the course variable, we are going to modify category and let's set it to advanced. Let's try this out, we are going to reload the application and we are going to see that indeed our card contains here a modified title and we have here the advanced tag. 
So it looks like this lifecycle hook is a great place to do last second modifications to the data after each change detection run. But let's now try to modify a different property. We are going to go here to our application component and let's say that we would like to try to modify here the course icon URL property that unlike the two other properties that we have modified successfully, the title and the label with the category, this property here course icon URL is being used in the content part itself. Let's see what would happen if we would try to modify this property instead of the other two. So here in our implementation, we are going to set the value of the course icon URL to the blank string. Let's see what happens now. So this time around, we are going to see that we get an error here in the console. So if we scroll down, we are going to get this error, error expression changed after it has been checked error. And we can even see what is causing the problem. So it's indeed the image URL property. It had a previous value that pointed to this URL and the current value is blank. So it looks like we can only change certain properties of our input data in this lifecycle method. The question now is what is going on here? Why can we modify one of the properties and not the other? Well, the answer is simple. These two properties, unlike the icon URL property, are not used here in the content part of the course card component. So whenever Angular is trying to detect if something changed in the component in order to decide if the component should be re-rendered, Angular is going to start by checking the content part for changes. Angular is going to check if some of the data used by the content part, in this case the course image, has changed or not. Immediately after this check for changes in the content part of the component, Angular is going to call this lifecycle hook ng after content checked in order to notify the component that the framework has finished checking the content part for changes. So now we can indeed modify here certain properties of the input data, but we can only modify properties that have not been used here in the content part. If we try to modify the icon URL property after Angular has already finished checking the content part for changes, well, that would be problematic because the goal of the change detection mechanism is to determine if the component should be re-rendered. So the change detection process itself should not itself modify the data. That could even cause an infinite loop. Let's say that we have some data, we try to check if the data has changed in order to re-render the component and the process of checking the data would again change the data itself, creating either potentially a loop, even an infinite loop, or we could run into a situation where the view would not accurately reflect the last value of the model anymore, which is something that we want to avoid. That's not the goal here of the change detection mechanism. The goal here is to always reflect the latest data changes in the view in a transparent way. This means that this situation that we have created here is problematic. Angular is trying here to build the view based on some initial data and the process of building the view has itself modified the data. So Angular does not know what to use here in this case and it's throwing us here an error. So if we comment out again this expression, we are going to see that again, we don't have an error and we have here the title and the category properties correctly modified. So if you are looking for a place to modify some data last second after each change detection cycle, this is a great place to do it, but be aware that you will not be able to modify properties that are part of the content part of the component. If the component even has a content part, it might be that your component is not using content projection and the ng content feature. And with this, we have covered the after content checked lifecycle hook. Now let's cover our last lifecycle hook. It's going to be the after view checked lifecycle hook. In the end of this section, we're going to provide a complete summary of all the lifecycle hooks and we're going to show in which order they are getting called.